This city was built at 8,000 feet above sea level with no wheels, no iron tools, and stones so perfectly fitted that you can't slide a knife blade between them. Some of these blocks weigh over 50 tons. They were carved from quarries miles away, dragged up impossible mountain terrain, and assembled with precision that modern engineers struggle to replicate. So how did the Inca do it? And why have these structures survived for 500 years while Spanish colonial buildings in the same region have crumbled? Today we're solving one of archaeology's greatest mysteries. Let's explore the engineering genius behind Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu sits on a mountain ridge between two dramatic peaks at 2,430 meters above sea level. It's surrounded by the steep Andes mountains, tropical forests, and some of the most challenging terrain on Earth. Here's what makes this so remarkable. When the Inca built this city in the mid-1400s under Emperor Pachacutec, they had no wheeled vehicles, no large domesticated animals like horses or oxen, no iron or steel tools, and no written language to record their techniques. Compare that to modern construction. We have cranes, trucks, power tools, computer modeling, and engineering software. Yet when modern engineers try to replicate Inca stonework using all of our technology, they struggle to achieve the same precision. The numbers are staggering. Machu Picchu contains around 200 buildings across 13 square kilometers. The site has 700 terraces, each carefully engineered. And get this, researchers estimate that 60% of the total construction effort went underground into foundations and drainage systems that you can't even see. But here's what really amazes engineers. In 1650, a massive earthquake destroyed Spanish colonial buildings throughout Cusco. The Inca walls? They didn't even crack. 500 years later, these structures still stand perfectly intact. So the question is, how? Let's start with the most visible miracle, the stones themselves. The Inca used a technique called ashlar masonry. Look at this. These massive granite blocks fit together so precisely that not even a knife blade can fit between them. No mortar, no cement, nothing holding them together except gravity and perfect geometry. But here's what most people don't know. This precision isn't just on the surface. Analysis reveals that the stones are perfectly fitted deep inside the wall, not just on the visible faces. The blocks interlock in three dimensions like an impossibly complex jigsaw puzzle. The most famous example is the 12-angled stone in nearby Cusco. But Machu Picchu contains hundreds of similarly complex polygonal blocks. Each one has multiple precisely angled sides that lock together with the surrounding stones. Now, the Inca actually used two main techniques. For common buildings, they used irregular stones joined with mud and clay. But for elite structures like the Temple of the Sun, they used polished granite with those impossible precision joints. So how did they cut and shape these stones? Remember, they had no iron tools. Modern experiments show they used combinations of bronze-tipped tools and smaller stones as hammers, splitting rocks along natural fracture lines. There's also evidence they used fire heating followed by cold water to create thermal shock, cracking the stone. But this doesn't fully explain the incredible precision they achieved. When researchers examine the stone surfaces under magnification, they find evidence of patient grinding and polishing, suggesting that creating a single perfect block could take months of skilled labor. Think about that dedication. Months of work for a single stone. Thousands of stones in the city. All coordinated perfectly. Okay, so they carved the stones. Now comes an even bigger mystery. How did they move 50-ton blocks up a mountain without wheels or large animals? Archaeological experiments give us some clues. Researchers have successfully moved large stones using wooden rollers, bronze-tipped levers, and inclined ramps. But this requires enormous human labor forces. One technique likely involved hundreds of workers using ropes to pull stones up specially constructed ramps. Recent discoveries show the Inca built roads with precisely graded inclines and strategically placed rest platforms, creating transportation networks designed specifically for moving construction materials. These roads themselves are engineering marvels. They had to calculate the exact incline that would allow heavy loads to be moved efficiently without the stones sliding backward or workers being unable to pull them forward. Historical records tell us Emperor Pachacutec ordered 20,000 men sent from the provinces for major construction projects. 
the Inca used a labor system called Mita, which required all males between 15 and 50 to work on large public construction. But moving stones is only part of the challenge. Imagine the logistics, coordinating thousands of workers, managing food and shelter for labor forces in a remote mountain location, scheduling material deliveries, ensuring the right stones arrived at the right time. This required project management skills that rival modern construction operations, all without computers, written records, or modern communication. And then, once a 50-ton block arrived at the construction site, it had to be lifted into place and fitted with microscopic precision against the surrounding stones. How they achieved this level of accuracy in final placement remains one of the great mysteries. Now let's talk about why these buildings have survived centuries of earthquakes while modern structures have fallen. First, notice the shape of Inca doorways and windows. They're trapezoidal, wider at the bottom than the top. This design is earthquake resistant because it distributes stress more evenly and prevents collapse under pressure. But the real genius is what engineers call the dancing stones phenomenon. During an earthquake, the precisely fitted blocks don't rigidly resist the seismic forces. Instead, they move and sway with the Earth's motion, then settle back into their original positions once the shaking stops. A mortared wall would crack and crumble under this stress, but the Inca's mortarless technique allows flexibility without structural failure. Here's a fascinating historical detail. Around 1450 AD, during Machu Picchu's construction, a powerful earthquake struck. You can still see damage to the Temple of the Sun from this event. This earthquake changed everything. After experiencing the destruction, Inca builders abandoned their earlier techniques using smaller stones and developed the advanced seismic-resistant designs we see today. They implemented giant stone blocks at the base with narrower inward-inclined upper walls, a design that proved far more effective. Look closely at Inca walls. They don't rise in a straight vertical line. They're slightly tilted inward. The corners lean slightly toward the center. These subtle design choices invisible to casual observers make all the difference during seismic events. The 700 terraces at Machu Picchu serve dual purposes. They're farming platforms, yes, but they also act as massive retaining walls preventing soil erosion and landslides that could undermine the city's foundations. Now let me show you the part of Machu Picchu most tourists never think about, the infrastructure that keeps it functional. Machu Picchu's water supply comes from a natural spring located above the city. From there, Inca engineers created a sophisticated system of stone channels and fountains that distributed clean water throughout the city. The famous stairway of fountains uses gravity and precise engineering to ensure a steady water supply at all levels of the city. This wasn't just about convenience. In the heavy rainfall of the Andes, managing water is crucial. Researchers have identified over 130 drainage holes built into the city walls. These weren't added later. They were planned during the initial construction to prevent water accumulation that could destabilize foundations or freeze and crack stones. Remember when I said 60% of Inca construction effort was underground? This is why. Deep foundations, site preparation and drainage systems form an invisible infrastructure that's the real secret to Machu Picchu's longevity. Each terrace includes carefully engineered drainage layers using crushed rock and soil. During heavy rains, water percolates through these layers rather than accumulating and causing erosion or landslides. The Inca didn't just build on the mountain. They integrated with it. They used natural bedrock as structural foundations designed buildings that follow the mountain's contours and shaped their construction to blend seamlessly with the landscape. So here's the incredible truth about Machu Picchu. The Inca achieved precision engineering rivaling modern capabilities using bronze tools and stone hammers. They moved 50-ton blocks up impossible terrain through organization and human ingenuity. They designed earthquake-resistant structures that have outlasted buildings made with modern materials and they created infrastructure so well planned that it still functions 500 years later. Today, Machu Picchu welcomes over 1.5 million visitors per year. That's more than 4,000 people per day walking through a 500-year-old city that shows no signs of collapse. When those visitors stand before these massive walls, 
most have no idea they're looking at mathematics, astronomy, hydrology, geology, and social organization all working in perfect harmony. The Inca saw Machu Picchu as more than just a city. It was sacred space aligned with celestial events. The Temple of the Sun's windows are positioned to catch the first rays of sunrise during the June solstice, honoring their sun god Inti. So the next time someone asks how the Inca built Machu Picchu without wheels or modern tools, you can tell them the truth. They didn't need them. What they had was knowledge passed down through generations, skilled craftsmen willing to spend months perfecting a single stone, social organization capable of coordinating thousands of workers, and most importantly, respect for their environment and an understanding that building in harmony with nature rather than against it creates structures that last forever. 500 years later, Machu Picchu stands as proof that advanced technology isn't always about having the most sophisticated tools. Sometimes it's about having the most sophisticated minds. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more ancient history mysteries. Next week, we're exploring why the Maya abandoned their greatest cities. And if you want to dive deeper into Inca engineering, I've linked some amazing resources in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.